All right, let's take a second to talk about this exhaust. This exhaust right here is the JFG exhaust, and it's a bolt-on exhaust for the Hawk 250. It is super easy to put on. Right here, you just need a gasket, and I needed a washer just to fill the gap in between the nut and the bolt because it was a little bit thinner, I guess you could say. So if you just get a washer for that, you should have one. And then a gasket goes in there, and then this pops in perfectly. Screws in where the old exhaust was and pops in right under the seat. Everything will go together exactly as you expect it. And it sounds absolutely awesome. Listen to this for a 230cc bike. Sounds pretty good, right? It gives really good performance gains. I kind of only recommend using this exhaust if you're going to be doing other performance mods like the nibby carb because it all kind of fits together this adds a lot more flow to the engine kind of unlocks it so yeah thought i'd just explain that a little bit i've had a few people asking about the exhaust all right let's go for a ride Honestly, one of the negatives about this exhaust is just how loud it can be. When you're really hammering on the throttle, this thing is screaming. And on the Hawk 250, it being not that fast of a bike, you have an exhaust that's screaming and people look and they're like, what is that? And you're going by at like 23 miles an hour, sounding like you're going 50. <laughs> so that can be kind of weird. Very loud. Looks good to me. Oh man, it has been hot as hell lately. It's supposed to be high 80s, low 90s all week this week. Should be pretty interesting. Good weather for riding the bike to be honest. As long as I'm moving, I'm cruising. Feels good. All winter, I can't wait for the heat. I'm like, man, I just want it to be nice again. <laughs> as soon as the heat gets here, everybody's like, man, can we get over this already? High 80s, low 90s, it's not even that hot, to be honest, but. It's not super comfortable. I got my AC cranking in my room. So whenever I come from outside, I go right in there and just <sighs> taking all the sweet, sweet cold. I wish there was a way to make the engine braking a little bit less severe on this bike. I hate how much it jerks me backwards when I let off the throttle. That's something I'm really hoping my next bike is better with. I like engine braking and I use it quite a bit, but it's just a little bit too strong on a bike like this. For how slow I'm actually going, I don't need to be braking with more stopping power than my rear brake. So I found out that this bike does redline at 8.2K, which is very low. The red line on the dash shows 10.5K. So I might do the zero to 60 again with a little bit better knowledge on when the RPMs top out on this bike and just take it to the top of the RPMs every gear and see how fast we can get to 60. The problem with the zero to 60 test is when I get to like 52, 53 miles an hour, I lose all my pull. It's actually kind of a respectable zero to 50, but zero to 60, not so much. I hate when people do that right there. That guy just slowed down to stick his hand out the window and talk to his buddy. Meanwhile, there's a whole line of people behind him.
really want to start learning wheelies. I don't think the gearing I have right now will be very good for wheelies, but I might throw the front sprocket back in there, the stock front sprocket. Get a little bit extra pull. I wish I could lane filter around here. I know as soon as I start to consistently lane filter, I'll either get hit by a car or get pulled over and ticketed for reckless driving. Because it is not legal to lane filter here. I'm pretty sure that's only in California and maybe Florida. But Florida feels kind of lawless. All the moto vloggers over there do whatever the hell they want. This turn over here always scares me because you can't see really see people braking when you're going into it, so it's kind of blind. And sometimes the stoplight can build up like this. And now I have an 18-wheeler behind me. And he stopped with plenty of space. Big rig drivers are honestly the most respectable drivers I've seen on my motorcycle. Like, you can tell they're actively trying to stay away from me or giving me extra, extra space. Being very cautious around me. Like, I, I've never been in a situation where I felt like a big rig didn't see me somehow. That would be a very scary situation, so I'm glad I haven't been in that. But they're usually hyper aware of their surroundings, which is nice. And it's completely in contrast to most cagers who are riding around with their knee eating breakfast, talking on the phone listening to podcasts I mean I I do all those things except for talk on the phone when I drive but you know what it is uh -oh, a little slingshot alright y'all I will see you guys tomorrow Peace.